Hi everybody. Welcome to Storytime at the Library again. My name is Anne. You all know that, of course. And this Storytime is produced by SCAT TV. So, you're all going to be on TV. So if you want to turn around and say hello, then we'll get down to business. Want to say hi to everybody in the audience? Hi. Okay. I have some really fun stories today. I hope you'll think they're really fun. Some of these are my very favorite stories. And I am going to start with Lizard's Song. I remember this You remember this book? book? Me too. Good. Me too. And guess what? Do you remember when I read this book one time? You guys loved it. Loved it. And you said, can you read that again? And now I am. Are you ready? Lizard lived in the mountains of the West. He liked it there, and he lived on a big, flat rock. He was so happy living there that he often made up songs. They were not fancy songs, but they were his. Almost every day he would dance about on his rock, singing a song. Zoli, 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 Zoli. Rock is my home, rock is my home. Zoli, Zoli, Zoli. Well, one day, Bear heard him singing. And Bear was the kind of bear when he saw something he liked, he just took it. Bear liked Lizard's song, and he wanted it. He ran up to Lizard's rock, and he said, Teach me that song. I want it. Lizard was glad to share his song. Sit down, Bear, he said. I will sing it over and over again until you know it. Zoli, Zoli, Zoli. Zoli, Zoli, Zoli. Rock is my home. Rock is my home. Zoli, Zoli, Zoli. He had to sing it ten times before Bear learned it. I know it now, said Bear. And off he went, singing and dancing. Zoli, 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 rock is my home. He was so busy singing, he didn't see the pond. Quack, 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 quack. The ducks on the pond heard Bear and flew off right past his nose. Bear was so startled, guess what happened? He forgot the song. He ran back to Lizard's Rock. Lizard, teach me the song again. I forgot it. Lizard sang the song over and over again. Zoli, Zoli, Zoli. And after the twelfth time, Bear said, I know it now. And off he went. Bear was very proud of his song. He went singing and dancing across the land. Zoli, 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 swish. Mm, a rabbit jumped out of his hole and ran right past Bear. Bear chased after it, but the rabbit got away. And so did the song. Bear could not even remember a single note. Zoli, 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 Zoli. You guys remember it. He started back to Lizard's Rock. Lizard, said Bear, teach me that song. Bear asked him time and time again. But Lizard was asleep. He didn't hear a word. And Bear didn't know what to do. He thought and thought. And then he scooped Lizard up in a sack. He would take Lizard home with him. That's what he'd do. He had Lizard in the sack, but it was such a quiet trip home. No song to sing, no dances to do. As he walked along, the sack swung about, and Lizard woke up. No sun, no moon. All Lizard could see was dark. See him in there all by himself? Lizard was so scared. He quietly began to sing his song. 
Zoli, 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 Zoli. Bear heard him and he dropped the sack. Lizard, Lizard, teach me your song. I want it. Bear, said Lizard as he crawled out of the sack, my song is about rocks. My song is about me. What about you, Bear? What is your home? Den, answered Bear. Den is my home. Lizard thought and smiled and then began to sing. Zoli, Zoli, Zoli. Zoli, Zoli, Zoli. Rock is my home. What is your home? Zoli, Zoli, Zoli. Bear listened twice and then he began to sing too. Zoli, Zoli, Zoli. Zoli, Zoli, Zoli. Den is my home. Den is my home. Zoli, Zoli, Zoli. They sang and danced all the way home. Lizard to his rock and bear to his den. den. Now, what would you sing? What would you say? Howdy. Tent is my home? No. Houses. House is my home. House is my home. Zoli, Zoli, Zoli. Good job, you guys. Okay. What did you think? Did you like it as much? What is? Apartment is a home too? Yes, you're right. Absolutely. Did you like that? Yep. Did you guys like that story the second time as much as you did the first time? Yeah. I did too. That's one of my favorites. Okay, now I have a really, really silly, silly, silly one. Do like a duck does. Okay? Do like a duck does. Ready? Five little ducklings following their mother. Whatever any duck does, so does every other. See, they copy each other. So they waddle, and they hop, and they scuttle, and they strap. Flop, 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 flop. All together. Quack, says Mama Duck. That's the way to be. Do like a duck does. Do like me. See them all following their mom? Okay. They all look like ducks to you? Yeah. All right, take a good look. There go the ducklings, all in a line. But who's creep creeping close, following behind? Wait, says Mama. You don't belong with us. Stop, says Mama. Do you think you're a duck? What do you think? A fox. You think it's a fox? He thinks he's a duck, maybe. But of course, says the fox with a waddle and a strut, that's just what I am, a big brown duck. Well, Mama Duck says he has no feathers and he has no beak. He has four claws on his hairy, scary feet. He has... Two ears that stick up a mile, and a wicked foxy nose, and a wicked foxy smile. So Mama says, well then, do like us. Head up, tail up, toes pointing out. Stretch your little wings, dear. Straighten up your back. Do like a duck does. Quack, quack. Then Mama leads them off together. Hup, hup, hup. Five little ducklings and a big brown duck. A hairy, scary stranger. A very silly duck. Look, says Mama, what a lovely patch of muck. Jump in the puddle, dear. Show you're a duck. 
Lots of bugs and beetles swimming in the scum. Open up your beak, dear. Yum, yum, yum. I don't think that, that fox likes it. You think he looks happy in that mud? <coughs> now, the hairy stranger has some notions of his own, and he's looking at the ducklings when he says, yum, yum. Mm, and he's creeping ever closer, and he's very, very near. But Mama turns and catches him and says, Look here. You don't like bugs. You don't like muck. You don't say quack. Are you sure you're a duck? Are you sure? Yes, I am, says the stranger. It's really, really true. I can waddle. I can scuttle. I can strut a little, too. I'm a duck. I'm a duck. I'm a duck like you. No, it's not. You don't believe him? No. So Mama says, show it. Prove that you're a duck. Do like a duck does. Do like us. Then they zip through the thistles and they slip into the river. Plop, 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 plop. All together. There he goes. Down go the ducklings. All their tails are up. And down goes the stranger. Glop, glop, glop. Uh-oh, he's not coming back up like the ducks. So where are all the ducklings now? Here they all come. Back up. Pop, 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 pop. Every one. But where's the very hairy, scary stranger? Gone home? Yeah. Well, says Mama, what a bit of luck. But I really always knew that was no duck. And that's the end. You all knew it was a fox, didn't you? Did you like that story? Yeah. You did? I like that, too. That's one of my favorites. It wasn't, I thought it was kind of silly that a fox would try to act like a duck. You didn't? Okay. All right. Now we have the bed just so. Look at this little book. It's one of my favorites. It's old, very, very old story. And there's a little person in it called a Hodgkin. I don't know if he's called it a person, but I'll show him to you later. The bed, just so. Okay. Once there was a tailor who fell asleep over his work every single day. See how sleepy he is? He was sleepy all day long because he couldn't get any sleep at night. Every night, when he began to fall asleep, someone or something was grumbling and complaining and stomping around. And all night long, the tailor thought he heard someone or something grumbling and complaining. This can't go on, the tailor said, and he went to see the wise woman. I must be witched, he told her. No, the wise woman said. If you were witched, your feet would be on backwards and your hair would be growing upside down. No, your trouble is that a Hutchkin has come to stay with you. A Hutchkin, said the tailor. What should I do? Make a bed for him, said the wise woman. Then he will leave your bed alone. Let's see if it works. So the tailor bought a bed for the Hodgkin. What do you think? There's the big high bed. It was made of oak wood. Now, said the tailor, you have your bed and I have mine. Let's both get a good night's sleep. What do you think? 
Think he's going to sleep tonight finally? But as soon as the tailor began to fall asleep, he heard a voice grumbling and complaining. Too high and too hard. Too high and too hard. Uh-oh. The next night, the tailor made a low bed of fern and feathers. Looks very comfortable. But as soon as he began to fall asleep, a voice woke him up, grumbling and complaining. Too soft and too tickly. Too soft and too tickly. When the tail, oh sorry, every day the tailor tried a new bed for the Hudgkin. And every night the voice woke him up, grumbling and complaining. When the tailor made a bed in this cupboard, the, vo the voice said, Too dark and too stuffy. Too dark and too stuffy. Next he tried a hammock. But the voice said, Too long and too loose. Too long and too loose. Then the tailor built a cradle. And the voice complained. Too teeter and too totter, too teeter and too totter. The poor tailor could not find a bed to please the Hutchkin. I'll never get a good night's sleep, he thought, and he was so very, very tired. And one night, he cracked open a walnut shell. He looked at that walnut shell and he thought to him, this looks like a tiny little bed. Why not, he thought. I've tried everything else. So he lined the walnut shell with cotton and peach down. Then he put a maple leaf on it for a cover. And then he put it right on the windowsill, just like that. Soon he heard a happy humming sound. <laughs> the tailor took the walnut shell and he looked inside. And there he saw no bigger than a mustard seed. Ah, that must be the Hutchkin, he said. He shut his eyes so tight to listen. And he heard a voice saying, just so, just so. I like a bed made just so. And at last, the tailor finally got a good night's sleep. And you guys, there's the Hutchkin. Is that a roar? <laughs> yeah. Want to come and see it quickly? Don't touch him, though. Sure. We can take a good look after story time, too. But I can see him. See him? I can see him. Remember they said no bigger than a mustard seed. See how teeny he is? That's why he wanted a little tiny bed. Like that? Yep, just like this. That was perfect for him. What did he say? Just so. Just so. I like a bed made just so. That was one of your favorite books? No. Oh. <laughs> did, any, did you guys like that story? Thumbs down. I, thumbs down? For the Hutchkin? Thumbs up. I say thumbs up, too. Thumbs down. Okay. Thumbs up. <laughs> All right. Are you ready? You guys know. Oh, wait. You know what? I want to do mouse tails next. Okay. You think you guys can tell me what kind of an animal, if you just see the tail of something? Do you think you can do that? We already did that. I know. What do you think, though? You think you'll be able to tell me the tail? Yeah. I don't think so. You think so? All right. Ready? I am a small mouse, and I happen to be an expert on tails, as you will soon see. Let's look for some tails. We'll search everywhere. And when we have found one, We'll guess who is there. 
No peeking now. All right? No peeking. Okay. I th I'm going to guess the pause. It's loyal and smart, and it makes a great pet. Well, maybe I'm wrong. If you touch its small nose, you will find that it's wet. Can you guess whose tail that is? You sure? Not a fox? All right, you guys tell me what it is. I, I guess fox, and I'm probably wrong. Ready? You're right. It's a dog, and his name is Sam. So you're, right now, you're one ahead of me. All right, let's see. Oh, you'll never get this one. With rings round its tail and a mask on his face. It will scatter your rubbish, rubbish all over the place. Can you guess what it is? All right, I'm going to close my eyes. You tell me. Oh, I don't know if you're right. Are you ready? You're right. You are too ahead. All right, this, uh, this one you're not going to guess. Oh, uh, well, if you hear what I'm going to say, you won't say fish. Its body is covered with slippery scales. It shares its wet home with both starfish and snails. Are you sure about that? I'm going to guess elephant. When I open this, it's going to be an elephant. And then I'm going to be ahead of you. Ready? Yeah. Elephant. Yeah. You're right. Three, three ahead of me. I guess I'm not a very good guesser, am I? Oh, no way. With black and white stripes from its head to its toe. It looks like a horse, but it isn't, you know. What do you think it is? I think... No, it's a horse. I'm going to say horse. A skunk. A skunk? Zebra. And zebra. Up. Oh, this is where it's going to be three to one because I know that it is a zebra. A zebra. You guessed right again. I never guessed them. I know. It's four. You're four. I'm zero. All right. Hand over hand, it swings through the trees using branches and vines like a circus trapeze. Can you guess what it is? Oh, you put cat. Did you ever see a cat? Don't you see cats in trees? Oh, yes, you do. This is going to be a cat. Thank you. Now what is it? Five to zero. I'm a terrible guesser. Oh, this one's this one's really simple. No. Inside a big circus tent full of fresh hay, I found a large creature, all wrinkled and gray. Can you guess what it is? No, you know what, guys? This really hippopotamus. I'm going with hippo. And now it's going to be five to one because this is a elephant. Oh, my goodness. Ha! You know what he said, though? I fooled you. That's not a tail. It's my nose. An elephant's nose. I fooled you. You did. Oh, this is a really hard one. The spines on its back are long, <laughs> are long, sharp, and prickly. And if it gets angry, you better run quick. Can you guess what it is? I'm not going to tell. Crocodile. Ready to see the crocodile, everybody? Now it's going to be six to one or seven to one? Seven to zero. 
A porcupine again. Eight to zero now. With a big ball of string and a strong summer breeze, this tail can fly over the tallest of trees. Okay. I saw an animal with that kind of a tail. I can't remember what it is though. Okay. I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna say monkey. Once I saw a monkey with all kinds of bows on its tail, so I'm going to say monkey. And it is a monkey? Nine. Kite. Kite. Yay, nine to zero. Oh, my goodness. Nine to zero. All right. Oh, you're not going to get this one. Its long, wrinkled snout is both pinkish and plump. There's a short, curly tail at the end of its rump. Can you guess what it is? I think it's a dog myself. Okay, that's right. I think it's a pig. You think it's going to You think it's going to be a Oh, you guys, you're not very good guessers. This is definitely a dog. Ready? It's going to be a pig. Nine. Ten. All right. A more beautiful bird could never be found with feathers so long they trail on the ground. I know this one. Can you guess what this is? A peacock. A peacock. A peacock? I think it's a cardinal. Okay, let's see. Okay. Who thinks it's a peacock? Me. And who wants to guess with me and say cardinal? You do? <laughs> Ready? I'm getting a little sad, you know. <laughs> I sat on a hilltop one cold, starry night. My eyes searched the sky for a big streak of light. Can you guess what it is? You think it's a comet? I, I think it's a fire. We're going to see. It is a... Comet. Twelve to zero. All right. It scampers so quickly across the barn floor, and when there is one, there are sure to be more. Can you guess what it is? Mice. Ooh. I think it's a squirrel. Because they scamper very quickly. I know that you're going to say this time squirrel so that I can be one. Just one right guess. And guess what? They, this is the family. Meg, Mortara, Melvin, Mary, Milton, Mimi, Molly, Mark, and Mother Mouse. And that's the end of my tale. Get it? I was zero. I guess you guys are you guys are gonna have to teach me how to guess a little bit better, don't you think? No. I didn't do so well, did I? Yes. Okay. I won't even help you. I won't help you. No one's gonna help me. No. Okay. We we're gonna do ask Mr. Bear. It's quick, and it's fun, and see if it's a, kind of a guessing thing. Maybe you'll guess what he gives it to his mom. Ask Mr. Bear. Are you ready? Once there was a boy named Danny, and Danny's mom had a birthday. And Danny said to himself, what shall I give my mother for her birthday? So Danny started out to see what he could find. He walked along and met a hen. Good morning, Mrs. Hen, said Danny. Can you give me something for my mother's birthday? Cluck, cluck, said the hen. But she has an egg. Let's see what we can find then, said Hen. So Danny and the Hen skipped along until they met a goose. Good morning, Mrs. Goose, said Danny. Can you give me something for my mother's birthday? Honk, honk, said the goose. I can give you some nice 
feathers to make a fine pillow for your mother's birthday. Oh, thank you, said Danny, but she has a pillow. So Danny and the hen and the goose all hopped along until they met a goat. Good morning, Mrs. Goat, said Danny. Can you give me something for my mother's birthday? Nah, nah, said the goat. I can give him milk for making cheese. Oh, thank you, said Danny, but she has some cheese. Well, let's see what we can find. So Danny and the hen and the goose and the goat all galloped along until she met, they met a sheep. Good morning, Mrs. Sheep, said Danny. Can you give me something for my mother's birthday? Bah, bah, said the sheep. I can give you some wool to make a nice warm blanket. Thank you, said Danny, but she already has a blanket. Let's see what we can find then. So Danny and the hen and the goose and the goat and the sheep all trotted along until they met a cow. Good morning, Mrs. Cow, said Danny. Can you give me something for my mother's birthday? Moo, said the cow. I can give you some milk and cream. Thank you, said Danny, but she has milk and cream. Then ask Mr. Bear, said Cow. He lives in the woods, way over in the hill. All right, said Danny. Let's go and ask Mr. Bear. Mm-mm, said the hen. Mm-mm, said the goat. No, said the goose. Uh-uh, said the sheep. No, no, said the cow. So Danny went alone to find Mr. Bear. He ran and ran and ran until he came to a hill. And he walked and walked and walked until he came to the woods. And there he met who? Bear. Good morning, Mr. Bear, said Danny. Can you give me something for my mother's birthday? Hmm, hmm. I have nothing to give you for your mother's birthday, but I can tell you something you can give to her. So Mr. Bear whispered a secret into Danny's ear. Oh, said Danny, thank you, Mr. Bear. Then he ran through the woods and he skipped down the hill and then he came to his house. Guess what I have for your birthday, Danny said to his mother. So his mother tried to guess. Is it an egg? No. Is it a pillow? No. No. Is it cheese? No. Nope. Is it a blanket? No. Nope, not a blanket. Is it milk or cream? No. no. His mother could not guess at all. So, Danny gave his mother a big birthday bear hug. And that's the end. That was the surprise. So I'm so glad that you guys came to story time today. Again, this was produced by SCAT TV. Well, story time is over now. Okay, but we will we'll read that book next time. All right? Is that okay? We read a lot of books today. Let's count how many. One, two, three, four, five books. That's not a lot. Not too bad. But. Ten books. You need a lot of time for ten books. Everybody wave and say goodbye.